Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Damage Preport on this fine Friday. We've got some trash to take out. By the way, uh, on the full show, we're going to be doing the, the garbage people. But also, I've already recorded, uh, I'm doing, I'm trying to do it every week, it's tough, but I'm trying to do it every week, a uh, special, exclusive TikTok take on the top five garbage people, because we often have to go very fast in the show. So I'm a little bit more in-depth with my thoughts. Uh, that's available on TikTok uh, each day. Okay, everyone, we've got a lot to talk about. Kaylee McEnany does not often pop up on our screens these days, although she is clearly, as you'll see, working on uh, getting a media gig. That's what this is all, of course, been leading up to. Uh, we have an awesome video. It's short, but it just says so much, and uh, we'll cover that if we get to the thousand likes. And it was on The Daily Show? I did not see that have to look for that. We have a lot of other news to get to, everyone. Um, so why don't you hit the like button, and we will jump into this. I just want to briefly mention this. By the way, can I just say, uh, there's a lot that I like about Media Matters, but this is one of my favorite things that they do. So they did an analysis. Less than a quarter of mainstream print articles that talked about the Tennessee uh, 3 issue with the two being expelled linked it to wider, broader, nationwide Republican anti-democratic efforts. That is so, first of all, terrible that they missed the actual context, but I just love that Media Matters does those sorts of like meta-analyses of how the media is talking about things. Bryn Poo KC, thank you for 26 months. Proud to have you as a member. Thank you. Okay, let's jump into a couple of stories. First, you want a fun story to start off? I know we're always like, we got a little bit of anxiety. We're gonna get to a thousand likes. So I wanna give you something very fun right off the bat. And here we go. There's a, a screenshots of a private chat between mega donors, some of whom have already given large amounts of money to Ron DeSantis, talking about how if they wanted MAGA, they would just fucking go MAGA. But the details, I think, are great. They are obviously very frustrated with him. Uh, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So what are, what are some of the things that they're frustrated about? By the way, one, what the fuck is wrong with RD? I think that stands for putting fingers? I'm not sure. Anyway, they took issues with a few things. So one of them uh, is his comments about Ukraine and Russia, just calling it a territorial dispute. They pushed back against him, and he walked back his comment, showing that he is listening to these sorts of criticisms. Uh, let's see. We have one describing him as a damn wimp for not hitting back harder against Trump. Let me just quickly say that any, if any of those mega donors are watching right now, you need to fucking get used to the idea that he's a, a how do you say it? A damn wimp. Because he is a damn wimp. That That's what he is. He's not going to be tough enough to hit back against Trump. I'm not sure. Maybe you can give a suggestion. Who actually would be tough enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Donald Trump? I don't know, but it ain't, it ain't Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis only punches way down in terms of political power. He cowers before people like uh, Donald Trump. Let's see, uh, we had that, we had... I just be, they, they, they believe that he lost momentum. We had previously talked about the guy that said his position on abortion and book banning. A lot of them, by the way, absolutely sick of his war with Disney, which I get that like some regular conservatives have been convinced is a good thing. But let me show you, even on Fox News, they seem to be getting sick of it. Again, if you're just joining us now, hit the like button, good Kaylee McEnany video. But first, we have this. I just want to observe that Governor DeSantis is close to making a fool of himself with his Walt Disney obsession. This has been going on now for months and months and months. And I would argue that it is unseemly, number one. A governor should not be come crashing down on, if not the biggest, one of the biggest business. I don't like Disney's politics either, their woke politics. My guess is Bob Iger is going to change that. But whatever. I, uh, DeSantis should make a deal and stop already. He's not running against Walt Disney for president. No, a, as we've been saying, he has no campaign skills. He can't debate and he can't negotiate. Damn. Not... Okay, so I love the first hits, but then he has no campaign skills, can't debate, can't negotiate. Jeez, don't don't hurt don't hurt him too much. Um, but but my favorite part about that, did you catch it? It was he's not running against Walt Disney. No, but hold on. 
but he kind of is. I mean, he's not, but he is. He's not in that he can't just beat Disney to become president or whatever, but he is because he does not want to run against Donald Trump. He wants to somehow get into office, or at least through the primary, by running against like trans people, second grade teachers, and Disney, because he thinks he can beat them because he's not terrified of them. He's not so terrified that they're going to hit him like he is with Donald Trump. The issue is that you can want that as much as you want, but it isn't actually going to work. You can't actually win in that way. And that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Like, even on Fox News, they're now, like, that's Fox business, to be fair. But they're just, they're openly mocking him for this. And it is really pathetic. It's not the most pathetic thing. We're going to turn to something even more pathetic in a second. Again, hit the like button. So, uh, the Daily News has reported that Rudy Giuliani, apparently, and this is coming off of an appearance with Steve Bannon. Um, man, that is a... That is a murderer's row of guests that he has on a weekly basis there. Anyway, uh, he said, okay, so Bannon started this up, asked Rudy if he'd be interested in accepting a high-ranking position were Donald Trump to become president again. And he said, I shouldn't ask for a job now, right? The boss would get angry. I'm willing to do whatever I have to do. Uh, he apparently said, I really believe I could straighten out the State Department I think it's the agency of the government, even more than the FBI, that needs to be straightened out first because it's us to the world. So, look, you could lodge this under, you know, just fun little conversation that they're having or whatever. But this is Rudy Giuliani at this late stage. If you're not familiar with Rudy Giuliani, this is what he looks like. Um, still believing that there is a position for him of honor, of respect of responsibility, he thinks that it would be a good idea for him to be in charge of literally anything, but more importantly, and more derangedly, he believes that there are people who agree with that and would put him in a position of authority, respect, responsibility. That's insane. After all you've been through with the COVID farts and the dildo shop and the melting on screen and the losing your ability to practice uh, law, the going through dozens and dozens of court cases in pursuit of the big lie and botching the whole thing, you think? Look, the one potential out he has is that Trump is insane and while Donald Trump 99 times out of, a t out of 100 is super fast to go from loves you because you're loyal to him to him throwing you completely under the bus. He has very occasionally turned that around. So, for instance, Steve Bannon, he ended up giving Steve Bannon um, a pardon. Uh, he hated Steve Bannon for a couple of years leading up to that, but he still was able to turn around. So maybe there is a very, very small chance. Um... But I think the idea that the idea that he would vocalize it and not believe that, that would be seen as utterly pathetic. First of all, the idea that Steve Bannon would have him on again, like Steve Bannon, I guess, is feeding into this by bringing him on a podcast. This is not a person who has anything important to say. <sighs> Rudy Giuliani, or at least what's left of him. Kat, the Femme in Yellow says, are you going to cover what's happening in Montana with the GOP silencing the state's only trans representative, Zoe Zephyr? Zoe Zephyr. It's like just like Tennessee. Yes, so Kat, we actually had, um, I don't know if you were watching the show yesterday, but we had a block where we were talking about multiple different sort of like related thematically issues like this. We did actually have video of the representative um, that we just unfortunately time-wise didn't get to, but we, we were planning to. We covered a couple of related um, topics of some of this, uh, you know, the right-wing war. Um, so unfortunately, we weren't able to get to it. Okay, let's see. A um, couple of minor stories before we get to uh, our last story. You know, assuming we get the 200 likes that we need. I mean, there's 600 people in the chat who haven't hit the like button, so it's really easy. Only one out of three of you need to do it. But again, don't fall to that mob thing of assuming that someone is going to do what's right. No. You step forward. You be the one to do what's right. And you don't even have to, like, you know, run into a burning building. All you have to do is hit that like button. Um, somebody needs to tweet to me the clip of Anna on The Daily Show because I did not actually see that, uh, unfortunately. Okay, everybody. So, let's jump to 
Texas, which I will remind you, whenever we do a story like this, um, Texas doesn't have any problems. Did you know that? I don't know if you live in America or if you live in another country, but it doesn't often get said enough that Texas does not have any issues whatsoever. It's, they're killing it. It's great over there. And so they can just fucking do whatever they want, honestly, because they're free to. So they have a new bill that's going to require schools potentially to display the Ten Commandments public schools, just to be clear. Oh, also, they would not be able to, uh, there would be no bar against them uh, providing time for people to get together for Bible discussion and prayer. Again, in public schools. Raspberry Skittlebutt Dragon says that won't stand. Now, there's a reason that Raspberry Skittlebutt Dragon says that, which is that that's obviously fucking explicitly unconstitutional. Obviously. Obviously. And the precedent from the Supreme Court, very, very crystal clear. However, Raspberry Skittlebutt Dragon, what the fuck does that matter anymore? I mean, the fact that it's obviously been adjudicated to be this exact thing as unconstitutional, what the fuck does that matter? We do not have legal scholars of distinction on the Supreme Court. We have fucking ideologues. We have Matt Gates and Marjorie Green in robes. That's what we have. So it's entirely possible that this could be upheld. And you might think, well, then what about the atheists and the, the people of other religions? Won't they feel ostracized? That's the point. <laughs> That's why they're doing it. It's not for the people who want the Bible study. They can do that shit at church. They already do. This is to hammer into other people their religious propaganda. That's all it is. Grumpy Cat, I haven't done the gas price watch in a while just because pe people began to complain about it. I can bring it back if people want. I found it to be fascinating. But people complained, so I got rid of it. Okay, we did pass 1,000 likes. We're going to move to that in just a sec. First, nine Michigan Republicans voted against getting rid of a bill from like a hundred years ago almost that bans unmarried couples living together. They believe, and by the way, it's it's not followed. They're not actually using the law, but symbolically they wanted to keep it because they believe it produces better moral results. And what that means is they think the law should guarantee that you have to abide by their morality. This is the party, I'll remind you, that believes in freedom and liberty Except if they don't want you to have those things. Fuck you, sluts. You don't get to live together. Sometimes I feel bad for the male sluts living in these states. Under the thumb of the religious. Anyway, uh, we did get to a thousand likes. So very briefly, here is Kaylee McEnany. She is co-hosting Outnumbered. Um, that is not a small thing. This is her thing. She was doing all of that stuff in government to get this. She just wants to, like, honestly, she is a person who's in the White House and she wants to do effectively what I'm doing. That's what she wants. Now, granted, in her defense, she'll get paid way, way, way more to do it. But anyway, we're gonna turn that in one sec. Brian, hey, Brian. Is there an equivalent of 10 commandments for Islam or others? If so, put them up. Then if they try to remove Sue, they'll find something. They'll find something. Anyway, here is Kaylee McEnany in brief our energy. I think the answer is obvious. But we have a president. He said this, the single existential threat to the world is climate change. This is where this guy's head's at. I can think of a few others, like you won't harden our well, schools. I think I know where his head's at. Literally <laughs> vulnerable. China, Russia, Saudi yeah. Arabia, you know, these new alliances. It's a huge. Okay. So, uh, first of all, the audience laughed. I like to think they laughed for the reason that I laughed when I first heard it, but probably because they've been trained to believe that not hardening the schools is the most existential threat facing our world today. That is, it is not that difficult at a base level to do a form of what she is doing. I think the bar is very deep below the earth's surface. Despite that, the best that she could come up with off the top of her head, and she brought this up, by the way, it's not like, they did, and then they asked her really fast to give an example of it, was not hardening the schools. Which, first of all, is fucking not an existential threat. What do you think the word existential means? I will grant you, it's not a, a, a word that people use day to day all that often, but I feel like she technically knows what it means, and yet she went to not hardening the schools. Now, she eventually got to, like, Russia or China or whatever. Do I think that Russia and China pose an existential threat? 
Do I think they pose a greater threat than climate change? No, obviously not. But at least that is in the neighborhood of a rational thought. There is some intellectual cover that comes from saying international alliances of nuclear-powered, you know, nuclear-equipped countries. You could say that. The first thing she came to was not hardening the schools. And what I love about that isn't just that it's stupid. Thank you, Kerbo. I appreciate that. It isn't just that it's stupid. It's that it is so, re like, revealing in how stupid it is. So we're not hardening the schools. That's an existential threat, a threat that could destroy literally everything. So the stakes are everything in the fact that schools are being shot up. But if the stakes were everything, then why are your only solutions absolute, transparent bullshit like there shouldn't be side doors? We should have some guy with a gun there. If you believed that it was an existential threat, I like to think that if you were being even 1% honest, you would think a little bit more outside the ideological box on that. It's not an existential threat. She doesn't believe that it's an existential threat, but she knows that this is how low the standards are in Fox News studios, that you can say stupid bullshit like that and people will clap for you. It's sad. But um, I'm sure someday she'll make north of a million dollars a year from uh, giving half thoughts like that. Bryn Poo says, Satanic Temple has seven tenets, which should be displayed along with Ten Commandments. They're actually good, too. Okay, I'm not familiar with those. I'm going to have to look on that. Jenny Kelly, thank you. Much appreciated. Okay, everybody. Um, so, hold on. The Daily Show, Andrew Tate. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to watch that. MZ, thank you. Okay, everybody. Uh, we've got garbage people coming up. We've got Brett Ehrlich coming up. Okay, everybody. Prepare yourselves. You've got 12 minutes. I'll see you soon.